Students, this is a recording of your genetics notes, day one. And our new unit of genetics is looking at uh, the patterns of inheritance from parents to offspring. There we go. Uh, we know that chromosomes are the method of inheritance where traits are passed down from parents. And a little campy photo here to see how uh, your kids look like you, right? Your, your dad's got the stripes going this way, mom's got stripes going that way, and of course, you are a new combination of both your parents. Oh, isn't that cute? Uh, genetic information. We know that genes are sections of chromosomes, a long strand of DNA. Uh, within that long strand, there are several genes, each of which is a recipe to make a protein. Uh, proteins uh, accumulate up in your body, and in this case, we're looking at maybe a brown protein called melanin, which can build up in your eye and lead you to have a trait, such as your eye color, your height, uh, your bone structure, even your blood type. So genes produce proteins, which then result in you having physical characteristics. So uh, on your chromosomes, you actually have a pair of them, one from mom and one from dad. Uh, there are these little sections like, like we're going to look at the gene for wing shape. Uh, so flies actually uh, have been experimented on quite a bit in the lab, and they can either have straight wings here or wrinkled wings, which we'll be looking at. So your genotype are the pair of genes that you inherit. So there's a little recipe on each of these to make a normal shaped wing. So this fly's genotype is a homozygous dominant or uh, do two pairs of dominant. So homozygous meaning they're both the same. Uh, this fly's genotype genotype leads to its phenotype, its physical appearance. So the fact that this fly has straight wings, we say is its phenotype, and that is determined by the pair of genes that it inherited, or its genotype. So we're already aware that mutations can lead to changes in those recipes. So as we looked at before, uh, I think this is a point mutation, yep. We've got a, a little section of chromosome and it's the amino acids here that are coded for that. And if we change the amino, the the nucleotide that will change the amino acid which will change the shape in the protein. So if you have a change in the DNA you will end up with a change in your trait. Uh, so we call those different forms of genes alleles. So if you have the regular form you would have normal wings so a normal gene would give you normal wings but if you had a mutated form or a mutated allele you would end up with these wrinkled wings. So the dominant form, uh, the normal shape uh, protein, always will be present or shown in the phenotype if it is inherited. So all it takes is for you to inherit one copy of a dominant allele from one parent and you will actually show uh, the dominant phenotype. So it will cover up any recessives that are inherited. Uh, the wrinkled wing we said is recessive which means the only way for it to actually show up in the, the physical appearance is if you do not have any dominant alleles present. So you would have to inherit two copies of this uh, mutant form of the gene in order for you to get mutant winged uh, flies. So humans have 46 chromosomes. So these are all lined up. These are real pictures of real human chromosomes. And these are all in pairs. You'll notice some are really long and some are much shorter and some are short on one side. They don't look quite like an X. Um, but each of these came one of them from mom and one of them from dad. So genes come in pairs. So you get two, two copies of information to make eye color, one from mom, one from dad, two copies to make a bone shape, everything. So you end up with two pieces of information for each trait. We call those two pieces uh, homologous chromosomes. So homologous, and then ho again, homo meaning same, uh, so same chromosomes in that they are a pair that have the same genes. So in this location right here, we're looking at flower uh, color. Uh, this is one, gene, one chromosome from one parent. This is the other chromosome from the other parent. Uh, they are homologous in those pairs you just saw a second ago. So they have the same genes in the same location, but this is the normal form from one parent that's going to code for red flowers. Uh, so that would be a red allele, and this is a mutant form of that gene from the other parent. 
Uh, so that will be the pink allele. So in this individual, they've got two genes, their genotype, one that's the regular form and the other is the mutant form. Uh, and it depends on how those traits work together to see if the plant will actually have red flowers or pink flowers. My guess in this case is that it will end up with red flowers. So we talked uh, earlier about true breeding plants or true breeding animals or even humans can have lines in their family where they for generations and generations and generations only have a single uh, physical characteristic. We call those individuals that have two copies that are the same homologous. Uh, sorry, I apologize, homozygous. So zygote is the uh, egg that has been fertilized by a sperm. Uh, so when, for an instant, you were that one cell, in that cell, uh, all your DNA is determined. So if both genes from both parents are the same or homo, we say that uh, you are homozygous. So all the individuals in this line are homozygous because they don't have any other uh, physical appearances for generations. They're true breeding. They have two dominant alleles. So it's impossible for them to have any other color. Hybrids, however, uh, can be the result of two different lines, family lines, two different true breeding lines being crossed. So that true breeding purple that we were looking at a second ago could be crossed with a white pea plant uh, that's homozygous recessive. And the offspring then would get one dominant allele from the purple plant and one recessive allele from the, the white plant and the offspring or child in this case would be heterozygous. It would have one of each. So heterozygous means hetero or different zygote, that fertilized egg. So if you are a hybrid and have a dominant and a recessive allele, one from each parent, uh, that would be a heterozygous genotype. All right, we're gonna come back to those flies then. If you have, uh, let's say a normal, shaped fly that has one dominant and one recessive allele and another normal shaped wing uh, fly that has a dominant and a recessive allele. Uh, they can be passed down in a variety of combinations. So we could get a dominant from each, in which case you would have two dominants and that uh, individual would have normal wings. You could get one dominant from one parent and one recessive from the other parent in a variety of combinations. So. Uh, dominant from one and recessive from, from uh, let's say, mom, or recessive from dad and dominant from mom. Both of those combinations, though, uh, would give us normal wings because every time you inherit a dominant, it's going to cover up the recessive. So the dominant dominates, it wins out. So it only takes one copy for it to be inherited. Uh, the only way to possibly have wrinkled wings is to not have any dominant alleles inherited. So back up here, both parents had a recessive and about one out of four chances then uh, you can inherit the two recessives together. So wrinkled wings in this particular family line would be pretty rare, about one out of every four possible offspring. That doesn't mean you have a guarantee of every fourth kid to have wrinkled wings, but each time an offspring is produced, it has a one-fourth chance of being this little guy here at the far right. We say the individual that has two alleles that are both the same, homozygous, both the same, and the dominant is homozygous dominant. These ones in the individual, uh, in the middle rather, are the heterozygous because they have one of each or the zygote, the fertilized egg is different. Or the last one would be homozygous recessive. So they're the same, they're the same little. Okay, Punnett square is a diagram to actually help organize all this information to figure out what are all the possibilities from uh, the two possible parents. So we have two individuals here that both have normal wings and we're gonna cross mate them. Uh, this would be a monohybrid cross because we're just looking at one trait being crossed with one trait and the other individual. And we're gonna make this Punnett square that's gonna organize all the possible gametes from these uh, two flies. So a gamete would be a sex cell. So producing eggs from the female and sperm from the male, uh, each individual only passes down, remember, half of the DNA from each parent. So mom being, let's say that this is the mom first, 
being a dominant and recessive heterozygous. Her eggs are going to be 50-50. We'll have uh, the dominant allele or the recessive allele. She can't give both. She's only going to give one out of her two possible uh, genes there, or alleles, gene forms. Dad is exactly the same. So let's say this is dad over here. He's got one dominant and one recessive. So half of his sperm would have a dominant allele in it and half of his sperm would have a recessive allele. So when they produce offspring, uh, if the mom dominant eggs are the ones that get fertilized, half of them would either have a dominant or half of them would have a recessive. So mom could pass either. Likewise, dad could pass his dominant and we could end up with two dominants together or a dominant recessive. Uh, if dad gives the other sperm is the lucky one to fertilize the egg, uh, we're gonna get these combinations. So the total combinations of offspring, these all represent the possible kids uh, from the possible egg and the possible sperm. We would have uh, in each inheriting one allele from each parent. Three out of the four possibilities would end up with the dominant phenotype. So homozygous dominant offspring only have the choice of having long straight wings because they don't have any of the recessive alleles in here. Both of these have a one of each, but all it takes is one dominant allele to cover up that recessive and they're gonna end up with dominant long wings. And only one out of the four is going to be the lucky winner to get those cute little wrinkly lacy wings. I think they're kind of a fun looking. Um, so this was much like cystic fibrosis with that Jennifer story we studied earlier. Uh, both parents had a normal gene and a mutant gene, and they just by chance both in, passed down the recessive allele, and, and this was the individual who got cystic fibrosis in our story earlier. So you will look at genotype ratios and phenotype ratios. What's the chance of you uh, passing down a both dominant? So there was one out of the possible four that were both dominant, two out of the possible four that were both one of each, dominant recessive or heterozygous, and one out of the possible four that was both recessive. So that's a one to two to one ratio. The distribution of phenotypes, the physical appearances, there were three, one, two, three normal shaped wings to one wrinkled shaped wing. And lastly, uh, we're gonna be studying Gregor Mendel pretty soon. He is the father of genetics because he was the first to really Pay attention to all of this and take detailed notes by crossing pea plants, which is why we often look at pea plants with these experiments. Uh, he allowed the pollen to transfer by actually painstakingly using a, a little brush and acting like the bumblebee and taking the pollen from one plant and transferring it to the pollen of another plant. And then he would cover them up with these tiny little bags individually so that no other bumblebees could get in there or the wind could get in there and he could actually control uh, which pollen sperm, right? Plant sperm was transferring one plant to the other. Uh, and thus he figured out the laws of genetics before DNA was even discovered. Uh, so this is a, a fun t-shirt that's out there giving peas a chance since 1856 was when he did his research and Google even honored him with a little Google uh, window back a few years ago. Uh, and he was an Austrian monk. Again, we will be studying more about him pretty soon. All right, you may watch that multiple times. Uh, it'll be saved here, and I hope that that was helpful for you to actually hear me explain the notes rather than just seeing them on your own.